We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available in Amazon right now Hello, everyone, and welcome to Easy Street. That was easy. <laughs> See my fitting. And uh, this is episode 43, and today's show is about celebrities. And one is I'm getting actually kind of tired of it, but before I do uh, talk about more about that, uh, I also want to remind you that you can find uh, Easy Street on Good Talk Radio. Uh, we play uh, all week long. Um, and just check our schedule, you'll find us there. And also, uh, go to Spreaker, and you can find us also. Um, if you go down to our description, you will find that we um, have all kinds of different links where you can find Easy Street. Uh, we uh, also like to um, remind everybody that if you'd like to be on Easy Street or have a subject that you'd like us to talk about on Easy Street, please feel free to let us know. We'd appreciate it. Just uh, message us on f uh, Facebook. We'd be happy to uh, see what we can do. Um, also, uh, yeah, I um, want to remind you that times are tough and all that stuff, so please uh, help support the show um, by either checking out our uh, Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags, uh, those are kind of designed to help support all of our radio stations. Also, if you go to Good Talk Radio, uh, if you feel free to uh, help the station out, we have donation buttons on the right or left-hand side, and that really is helpful. It really is. Um, nobody likes to uh, ask for assistance, but we could use assistance. <laughs> so anyway, celebrity BS. Yes, um, I, I'm not going to say the word, but... It's just driving me crazy to watch these commercials. Um, news stations are great for it. It's like, we stay at home for you. We uh, we're stay at home to help support doctors and nurses, all that stuff. And what I want you to really realize is who's making those comments. They happen to be ones that are at home employed, <laughs> making money, paying their bills. Uh, making the mortgage, paying for their health insurance, and, um, you know, uh, affording their groceries. Those are the ones that are making these commercials. And I, I appreciate what they're trying to say. Stay at home. Keep everybody safe. But once again, I have to say that I think the cure is worse than... <laughs> um, the actual virus and so I think we really do have to get back to work um, everything's crashing and burning now please do not go by the stock market it's being totally manipulated uh, the government is just pumping money into that incredible numbers which is not good for us because it's going to push inflation up and it's going to cause more debt of course and uh, the, the government can't be subsidizing us without income and if we're not working a majority of us aren't then they're not making the income to pay for what they're giving to us and these loans are not really helping small business. They may be able to get money, but they have to pay it back. And so, yeah, this is totally ridiculous. But getting back to celebrities, the other thing I cannot stand, and I'm sure, in fact, I'm sure most of us are feeling the same way, is watching all these Grammy Awards and all these other awards and stuff like that, and all these guys trying to make political statements. Or if you watch The View, which I will never watch, and late night TV now on all primary shows. Um, believe me, I used to be the first one to love to watch Leno or used to watch Johnny Carson. And they, yes, they could make fun of the pol uh, politicians and stuff like that, but they did it tactfully. But now it's just pure hate and one-sided. And uh, 
I, I'm, I know that a lot of people have just stopped watching late night television and finding alternative stuff because the three major guys, uh, David Lenderman, he used to be all right. Um, they're just uh, losing it and they think they know better than the public. And they're so out of touch. And then the funny part is, is now some of them are doing shows from home and don't have their writers and don't have uh, the millions of dollars to back up their shows for their little gimmicks. Uh, you can find out just how crappy their shows are. They're nothing like the old Leno's and the old Johnny Carson's and David Letterman. Those people were naturals and they knew when, uh, you know, they all pushed buttons back then a little bit, but they never went overboard. I think Letterman would probably be the craziest one back then, but uh, it, it's gone. It's totally garbage now and these celebrities have no idea of the general public anymore of what we're going through to just hold on to the American dream whatever that dream seems to be their morals are so way out there that it's you know uh, embrace everything and inclusiveness that uh, it's getting well the, the bottom line is the celebrities the best ones are the ones that just stay out of politics because celebrities are entertainers that's their job so entertain us but don't try to preach to us because most of them they're so out of touch of what really is going on in the world that they just don't get it now there's a lot of great celebrities out there that just you never hear from them you never, unless they're doing their shows and uh, they're living kind of normal lives. Um, they're uh, at home doing their things, staying out of the lamplight and keeping their opinions to themselves. And when they do do movies or do do television shows, you don't look at them differently because they're actors, they're entertainers, they're doing their jobs. Um, now I watch Meryl Street uh, as much as I used to like her because she does so much political BS. I, I just don't want to watch. Um, there's a whole bunch of them out there that um, I don't know all their names that they constantly think they know better. Lady Gaga, I've seen a, um, a Taylor Swift. Sorry. <laughs> I love her music, but every once in a while she blabs out something that really is just something she's not qualified to be telling me what to do or telling us what to do. The bottom line, guys, these celebrity things, these commercials, ask yourself, first of all, who is this person and are they really suffering or are they actually understanding my life? Um, there's like big shows going on all the time, raising money and stuff like that. If they would put their energy into something that actually all of us would benefit instead of trying to keep us divided, um, it would be better. So I, I just want you to realize when you're watching those, the next time you see a commercial like, we're staying home so we can be safe or we're supporting our nurses and things like that. Sounds good. But you got to ask you know, that most of them are like newscasters, things like that, that are getting a paycheck working from home, making their bills, paying their bills and being able to live life. And as far as the basics of buying groceries and mortgage and all that stuff, they're fine because their checks are still coming in. Is yours? Anyway, think about it when you're watching this stuff. This stuff on television lately uh, on the primary channels is just total BS. <laughs> so that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Would you like better radio with great talk shows and great music and less garbage? Good talk radio is your choice. We have great programming, great music, and a great attitude. We love our country. We love our listeners. Good Talk Radio. We are back. And I also want to remind you, please go check out Good Talk Radio. It's a paradigm shift. I know you're used to your radio station playing in your uh, car right from the radio you have in there. But um, 
really uh, there's a big trend of new radio stations out there that uh, offer so much less you know yak and noise and, and and they actually just get to the point of either playing music or playing good talk shows uh, and uh, good talk radio is one of those stations and a lot of people will take their cell phone up uh, use the live 365 app and uh, most newer cars now you can plug your cell phone right into uh, your uh, radio in the car and through the auxiliary and listen to what you want to listen to whether it's podcasts or radio stations uh, while you're driving um, otherwise you can just listen to uh, you pull up the uh, live 365 app listen um, do a search you'll find good talk radio um, and uh, you can play it anytime that you're kicking back and uh, just like to listen to either music or some good talk shows so yeah check out good talk radio uh, the next thing I really wanted to talk about was uh, uh, a new show I've been watching. It's a YouTube channel called the Ice Age Farmer. And uh, I'll try to put a link in the description below. It's called Ice Age Farmer. And uh, when you listen to his show, he's got a real mono kind of voice. Uh, but the guy does really good research on especially what's going on with how the uh, effects of the coronavirus being shut down and how it's affecting business and food supplies and etc and so one of the things that's concerning is cause and effect um, you got to remember that anytime you shut one thing off another thing could be affected and uh, so uh, that's what I wanted to bring up is he actually brought something up it just shocked me is we could actually have a water supply problem it's like what it's like it's not like electricity's down it's not like uh, water is really uh, not available the problem is water treatment is a problem because apparently when you do water treatment uh, they use co2 and there's a shortage of co2 because of the cause and effect one thing isn't available workers aren't available uh, uh, processing is shut down and so now there's becoming a shortage for co2 which affects uh, cleaning our water but also affects little things like beer <laughs> you may have to go without beer or pop there's a lot of things that use co2 even refrigeration is using co2 so who would have known um, but the problem is is uh, uh, they're talking about wheat shortages now because we're not producing enough wheat and the countries that we get wheat from are hoarding theirs and saying well we better keep it for us and so cause and effect cause and effect that's why I've been advocating we need to get back to work yes it's going to cause more problems in the uh, COVID is scenario um, but we can't do this any any longer we're gonna have to uh, fight the battle and uh, and get back to work we can't shut down this economy it's gonna kill all of us it's gonna kill the United States our economy and the long run is shortages and rationing and if you haven't don't think that's true it's already happening look at your grocery store there you know, I don't know if we'll ever see our grocery stores as fulfilled as they used to be. Um, our beef, our pork industry is something else. Our chicken industry is a problem. Uh, remember, uh, a lot of feed and things like that. It was also supports maintaining our uh, meat supplies and chicken and poultry. And also, we're having shortages on um, seafood, which in some cases could be better because uh, we get a lot of our seafood from other countries and of course they can't maintain and so they're not don't have supply so it does force us to go more with our local stuff and and then uh, you know a lot of us will say well let's not buy anything from China anymore and uh, um, which is yes I agree um, however there's still so many products that they make for us that are such low cost and because that's what you want that's what I want we want cheap stuff quality and cheap and uh, some cases America can't do it um, the thing is I think 
If you're going to use other countries, we need to spread the wealth. Make sure you do a few things in Mexico, a few things in Italy, a few things in China, a few things in Taiwan, a few things in uh, Korea, South Korea, and, and spread out your products that way. Um, but to have all your you know uh, prescription medicine, 90% of it's being done in one country? Are you kidding me? But getting back to this uh, Ice Age Farmer, that's what it's called. Um, he does really good. He's just reading and finding articles pertaining to the subject. He's not making up stories. Me, I'm just telling you something I read. I'm not actually showing you articles. Um, I'm asking you to go check out the YouTube channel Ice Age Farmer. And you will be in awe. Um, it's not a show de de uh, designed to entertain you. It's one to educate you and uh, hopefully even get you... Uh, any article, anything he finds, he leaves references for you to go read yourself. And uh, I think we have a severe problem out there. And uh, um, he's mentioning that we probably won't really feel the effects till May and June of really feeling that we got some major issues if we don't get this country back up on running. So once again, um, love to hear your comments, your ideas. Um, and... Uh, even things you may have read, maybe uh, you say, well, yeah, it's only 10% of pork industry uh, processing or maybe, but when you add all the different companies, now it's like 30% of people that can process like pork. Um, so yeah, we get some serious, serious problems. And uh, I think we need to wake up. And so the next thing I'd like to talk about a little bit, once again with you in the next section here is gardening. All dogs smile when they know they have quality waste bags from Ranger Rob. What makes Ranger Rob poopy bags different is a bigger and deeper design. Easy tie handles and lemon scented. So get on the stick and head on over to Amazon right now and get yourself your own bag of Ranger Rob poopy bags. Get low cost and free shipping. Yes siree Bob, Ranger Rob poopy bags are the best <laughs> they're bigger they're wider they're deeper smell like lemon and are very affordable and you can find them on amazon and they will help the station um, the next thing i wanted to talk to you again and i maybe i'm preaching this a lot but uh, i uh, i just did a video this week of uh, showing you uh, a planter box that i just finished along with other i've had uh, i have actually a little playlist on the ranger rob channel that just has to do with Arizona uh, gardening. And um, I, I think those are important because, uh, you know, in the last module, we we're just talking about some of the shortages and some of the things that are happening. I truly think that everybody should, in whatever region you're in, learn how to not only garden, but also how to um, store food for longer periods of time. Even if you don't grow your own stuff, buy larger quantities and learn how to store them like potatoes how to get those to last longer if you're uh, uh, buying uh, cucumbers or beets and things like that learn how to do pickling which is so easy super easy and everything i'm talking about you can learn quickly just using youtube um learning to, and then grow things that you like don't try something weird like uh, asparagus or something that your kids don't like or uh, you know uh, grow things that you will eat for example we love tomatoes of course we grow our own tomatoes we love sugar peas one is they uh, are really easy to grow and they're just delicious and the pets love them too <laughs> it's a great treat for the pets and you can freeze them so i've got tons of sugar peas now that i produce myself um, i'm doing actually my own zucchini um, there's a lot of things you can do with zucchini um, and then strawberries, I'm, I'm gone hog wild with strawberries because one is uh, I get five or six a day and then I um, clean them, dry them out, um, just let them, you know, get the water off of them, trim them and then freeze them. Uh, so I got a large bag of uh, strawberries that I can use for anything, for making jams, to making milkshakes, to making treats. Um, uh, strawberry shortcakes, all kinds of stuff, and they're just a delicious treat, and and, and even kids love strawberries. 
uh, and they're so super easy to grow here in Arizona. Uh, but anyway, my point is uh, learn to maybe start learning how to grow a few things in your yard, uh, but make sure you grow things that you like and you will eat and uh, uh, either pick very simple things to grow um, that are come natural to your area. Uh, I'm actually trying a few new things. I'm doing, trying watermelon, um, um, antelope, cantal antelope, cantaloupe, and um, I love cucumbers, but I haven't been that successful. But I'm being a little bit careful, a little bit more careful this time to pick the right ones for my region. Remember, when our summer comes, and I'm doing this in spring, we get these humongous hot temperatures, and there's only certain plants that will make it through that hot temperature. However, we have two kind of growing seasons. We have a fall and a winter to spring, uh, two, two actual uh, growing seasons. But you, you can only grow certain things. Um, and I'm trying a little harder to do beans. Uh, the green beans and stuff like that. Once again, all that stuff, if you're successful, you can freeze. Uh, I've actually uh, um, invested in another little freezer. I got a cute little five cubic foot one. Um, uh, I found when you get really big freezers, you tend to bury things too much and forget what you have in there. Um, I'm actually thinking about getting a second five cubic foot freezer, just little guys, that I can use sort out one side to be fruits and vegetables and the other side would be just my meat supply and stuff like that and so whenever you see good deals you also can take advantage of oh chickens on sale for 199 a pound and it's all you know chicken breasts uh, buy a whole bunch of them and then get home and uh, uh, start utilizing using a, a, a food processor where you can uh, uh, open those packages and seal them separately uh, in, in accordance to the size of your family uh, I think this is going to become something much more important to all of us that we need to do. Uh, if you live in an apartment, uh, you can still grow little things off of your porches. There's, uh, if you're in a condo, if you're in a uh, duplex or something, you can grow little things, different little things. Potatoes is my next big achievement that I'm going for um, in uh, September. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, uh, learn how to grow my own potato plants and and and, and then uh, I have a cool room uh, we don't have cool rooms in uh, uh, in our garages at in Arizona but we can uh, I have a room that I actually store our Range Rock poopy bags in and our prep supplies uh, that's cool enough to keep things like potatoes in so uh, yeah I just I, I know it's a little preaching I know it's a little boring kind of stuff and it's like oh I don't have a green thumb I think you're going to have to learn to get a green thumb. Um, maybe when you buy your next house, you keep in consideration, do you have room to grow some plants? Um, yeah, I think uh, our lives are changing. I think our uh, real estate and places we got moved to are going to be uh, crucial that we learn how to uh, grow our own food, store our own food for longer periods of time. Um, and then, can you store some of this food with or without electricity? Um, I mean, even though everything is normal, we haven't a disaster, or we're talking about we may have problems with water. What? Because of CO2. We don't have anything to process or clean our water um, through our uh, water systems. So who would have known? So anyway, please, guys, consider really um, there's no reason why you can't learn how to grow something I and mean, pick something simple. Start with radishes. Uh, radishes are super simple and very forgiving and they grow very fast and the kids can have fun with them. So, uh, uh, yeah, get the family involved, the whole work. So, um, and then once in a while, throw some flowers out there too, but, uh, it'd be better if they're edible. <laughs> so there you go. All right, guys, we're getting towards the end of the show. My last little thing I wanted to point out is I'm thinking some of my alternative shows are kind of losing it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, and I, I love them all, but um, we'll start with Marfugles. Uh, seems like they're uh, kind of getting a little um, concerned about things that uh, aren't quite as a uh, 
solid as they used to point out and stuff. So in the last couple of uh, last week or two, there's like a couple of shows are going, whoa, um, <laughs> come on, guys, <laughs> careful. Um, uh, you know, so uh, I guess the craziest one lately is I used to, oh, I still do. I enjoy watching AMTV with, and uh, there's two people on there, and I don't remember the one guy's name. He's fairly new to this, uh, uh, their alternative uh, uh, media news thing they call themselves, uh, AMTV. And there's a guy named Chris Green on there, and he's, uh, some reason he's in Hawaii. I don't know why. But I think he's been quarantined a little too long. Um, so far, he's uh, uh, having crazy dreams. And then he'll get on the uh, YouTube and, and just blast away what he dreamed. And he swears it's from God. And, and, and um, he, I don't. I, I don't want to question that part of it, other than the fact that when he makes predictions of what he thinks is going to happen, it, it's a little bit on the uh, whew, uh, way out there kind of thing. So today actually happens to be April 21st. So those of you who watch Chris Green, I'm still waiting for uh, uh, big dark uh, fog cloud and aliens to land today. And uh, uh, if it happens, uh, Please feel free to make fun of me on this show that, uh, you know, uh, Robbie you should have taken him serious. Um, but anyway, we watch him kind of more for the entertainment than we do factual information. And I'm not sure if that's good. And so, uh, um, Chris, if you're out there, really, you might need to fly back to Arizona. We have a little bit more freedoms here where you can actually get out of the house a little bit. Uh, however, we still love you. We still um, like your show. Um, but um, sometimes you're really getting off there on, on a tangent. And uh, a little concerning, but still entertaining. It's one of those when he, you show up on the screen, when we watch our YouTube stuff, we go, uh oh, what's Chris got on his mind now? And uh, hopefully he hasn't been, sh you know, hitting too much shots of uh, tequila or something. But anyway, or he's just in, he's in paradise over there in uh, uh, Hawaii and he can't get off the island and they've got so many restrictions they can't go on the beach that's that'll drive you insane when you're in Hawaii so I'm just saying but hey guys I want to take the time to say thank you very much for listening to Easy Street please leave your comments please be professional with your comments uh, if you got things we like uh, like us to talk about we will uh, please check down the description. Uh, please check out the video uh, YouTube channel um, Ice Age. What did I say it was? <laughs> Ice Age Farmer. Uh, very interesting data that he's uh, um, reporting to people, and I think it's a a good show to subscribe to and and uh, stay. Uh, informed about our food supply. He's uh, doing, I think, a pretty good job, not making up his own stories, literally just finding articles that our uh, primary media is just not covering. And uh, they better talk about Trump or something uh, or gossip. And they're just not doing their jobs anymore. So, uh, uh, you know, Marfugel, AMTV, uh, Ice Age Farmer and plenty of other ones too are really good shows to um, that they'll use factual data and back it up with articles that they found uh, that we can read too and, and decide for ourselves what we think. So uh, guys, have a great day. Thanks for listening. Be safe out there. Be smart. Change your paradigm a little bit. I think our lives are changing and I think it's important that we all change with it and learn a few new tricks out there. So anyway, guys, talk to you later. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.